I'm the Game Professor, and welcome to Games as Lit 101. Video games are in an interesting time right now, right on the cusp of really being relevant to our society as a whole, instead of really just being relevant to gaming culture itself. And there are a lot of different ideas out there about what that should look like. And of course, when one part of popular culture enters such an upheaval, the others tend to follow along a little bit. So today we're going to talk about one such issue, one that's been around for a long, long time, but recently had a resurgence in video game culture and spread surprisingly far. That's the question of how social issues and important messages affect a work's quality. You can see the controversy in some recent events in the gaming world, like when Polygon's review of Bayonetta 2 factored the game's fan service into its final review score, or basically any time an indie developer tries to release an artistically meaningful game with simple or non-existent game mechanics. Some people would prefer that video games be judged really only by their game design and how enjoyable they are, whereas others would prefer that the message and the artistic statements of a video game be factored in. And of course, this rekindled the same discussion in other mediums as well. The biggest example was probably the Sad Puppies incident, in which a whole bunch of people basically fixed the Hugo Awards to include more fun, adventurous science fiction, rather than the awards' tendency to recognize speculative science fiction books that explore modern social issues. That whole situation was a pretty big mess, but I'm not here to talk about the controversies. I'm trying to get to the question behind them. Is a work of art that addresses important issues or carries a meaningful message automatically better than a work that doesn't? Well, really, this is one of those questions that's not even really framed correctly in the first place. The way it's asked kind of skips over the actual issue. It allows some people to easily say that of course a story that addresses actual real-life issues is better than one that doesn't, and other people to say that such things have nothing to do with how enjoyable and well-made a work is. But when an issue is simplified like that, it tends to just split the answers into two different sides, neither of which really actually address the problem. The real question being asked here is whether the social, cultural, ethical, or political elements of a work have any bearing on its quality. And quite frankly, the answer is a clear and immediate yes. I mean, it would be downright foolish to ignore such an important part of a story. But see, it's not just because it's there in the first place, it's because it it is part of it, put simply, it's part of the work. And to ignore it would be to only look partially at the work. But that means that that message is subject to critique, just like everything else. Look at Birdemic. I know I'm picking low-hanging fruit here, but it makes the example easier. It's a film about climate change and reasonable treatment of our planet. That's an important message, right? But the movie is also terrible in every way imaginable. <laughs> More importantly, even the message itself is done very poorly. It makes little to no sense in the context of the story, and it's delivered almost exclusively through monologues jammed into the middle of the story for no reason. Then why are they attacking us? I don't know. But what I do know is global warming is causing viral diseases such as bird flu, West Nile virus, and SARS. Birdemic has a very important message, but it delivers it just so, so poorly, alongside everything else about it that it did very, very poorly. So, obviously the inclusion of such elements did not actually make it a better movie. Compare that to Disney's recent film, Zootopia, which dealt with some pretty complex issues of prejudice, equality, and social justice. The film is so highly praised not because it included these elements in the first place, but because it did so well with them. It tackled very complex and adult topics in a comprehensive manner that both adults and children could understand, and that's praiseworthy. The point here is that neither of these films succeeded or failed based on the mere inclusion of an important message. That message, like every other aspect of the movie, is judged based on how well it comes across and how well it was presented, which means that yes, we do actually consider that when we're talking about how good the movie is overall, but we do judge its quality, not just its presence. Which means that both the extremes that we usually think of as answers to this question are wrong. We absolutely should consider the messages a work sends, because that's an important part of it, and to ignore that so we can just have fun with it without thinking too hard about it is to form an incomplete and, quite frankly, meaningless concept of what the work is and what it means. But, at the same time, including those important messages in and of itself does not make a work better. But then we still have something of a struggle here. I mean, we answered the two extremes, but as is almost always the case, neither of them were right, and the question essentially remains unanswered. So, 
Let's say, theoretically, that there exist two different video games that are exactly equal in quality. Two different games, but the exact same quality. Great graphics, great story, great gameplay, just everything, both very good games, equal to one another. Except that one of them, the story, addresses one or another important social issue, and the other one, it's just a fun ride. Is the one that addresses an important issue a better game than the one that doesn't? And that gets a little difficult to answer. Uh, let's just pretend for the sake of the example that this kind of quality is actually quantifiable in the first place, because uh, we all know that in a real-life scenario there would be no agreement on whether these two games are of equal quality in the first place. On one hand, well, quality is quality. Theoretically, the actual content of two equally well-made games wouldn't actually have an effect on how good they are. I mean, there is obviously some kind of limit to this. A really well-made story that makes a serious argument for murdering children would be really terrible, regardless of how well-made it is. At least, I'd like to think that we can all agree on that. And honestly, I I'm not entirely sure what the answer is, but I do think it's safe to say that even if a meaningful story doesn't make a work better, it does make it... more. Art can entertain. It can capture our imaginations and draw us into worlds and stories that we would never experience in our daily lives, and that's just an amazing, incredible thing. Art can also make us think. It can educate us and help us see from different perspectives and gain a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us, and even if that's not necessarily automatically better, isn't it worth something more in the end? Now, that's not to say that enjoyable action romps, predictably uplifting romantic comedies, or big dumb shooter games are bad or even worthless. They're very enjoyable, they serve a good purpose, and they should absolutely be recognized for their merits. But wouldn't something that gives you the opportunity to learn, to change, and to grow be more valuable to you, and for that matter, to the culture it's presented to? It's a complicated issue, and I don't have all the answers. I do know that both kinds of stories are very valuable and important. I also know that we shouldn't just be blindly disregarding whatever messages our games send, but we also shouldn't be blindly praising those games just because they have those messages. But I do think that there's something to be said for a work of art that not only passes the time, but makes you a better person while doing so. Whether you agree or disagree, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down there, and if you like what I have to say, check the description for links to Games is Lit 101 on Facebook and Twitter so you can hear me say more things. There's also a link to Patreon down there if you want to help support the show. As of the time of filming, I haven't actually decided what next episode is going to be about, so I'll just let my future voiceover tell you. A review of Quantum Break and the novel based on it. Thanks, future me. Also remember that in a few weeks we'll be analyzing the story of Hatoful Boyfriend, a romance game about birds. Yeah, that probably will be about as weird as you're expecting. So, until next week, class dismissed.